Lakeland Public Television presents Currents with host Ray Gildow. Sponsored by Nisswa Tax Service, offering tax preparation for individuals and businesses across from the City Hall in Nisswa and on the web at nisswatax.com. Hello again everyone and welcome to Lakeland Currents, where tonight is a special treat. For the past 10 years, we spent a fair amount of time every year talking about economic development and how to attract businesses and industries into our communities throughout Minnesota. So tonight we're going to talk about the other side of the coin. Entrepreneurs, people who have started new businesses in a variety of places, and what it is that's made it attractive to them to come into some of these communities. And so maybe some of you folks in economic development, chambers of commerce, whatever, can get some important clues tonight from our program. It's a real pleasure to offer or to introduce to you tonight uh, Mary and Mike Ives, who are from Grand Rapids now, but they've traveled around, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, welcome to Lakeland Currents. It's a, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank it's nice you, to be Mary. here. And tell us, maybe you could start telling us about the businesses that you do before we get into some of the current projects the that you've got. Current businesses or what we've what done, in the, done in the past. <laughs> yeah, what you've done in the past, probably. <laughs> well, I, I guess. Uh, I pretty much uh, have worked uh, only for myself since I was 21, and Mary and I were married at that time, and uh, for most of our married life we've worked together. Uh, started out in the uh, manufactured housing community business uh, in St. Cloud, learned very quickly that you had to be in the sales business. What was that? Was that on the north side of town? No, it was actually on the south side on Highway 10. I had a... Uh, a community and a dealership called Sherwood Homes. Oh, sure. And uh, sold a lot of houses. The market was quite good in the 70s, mm -hmm. uh, late 60s and 70s. Sold a lot of houses there and mm -hmm. uh, got to love the business. Um, as you go north on Highway 10, by the way, there's a community called Rockwood Estates. And yep. uh, we built, Mary and I built that. Really? In the early Just north 70s. of the river? Yes. Yeah, 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 and uh, consequently we sold it in the uh, mid '80s. But uh, I guess uh, we've we've been in the uh, well. From there, we we uh, got into the radio business in the uh, in the 1980s. A natural progression. Well, <laughs> and, here, and here's the reason: I I was used to a couple million dollar inventories, and what fascinated me about the radio business is one: the mechanics. I like mechanical things. Mm -hmm. And, but the mechanics of it, and number two, it was a sales business, and number three, I didn't have a couple million dollars worth of inventory. It was only time. I mean, you're selling time on the radio. Mm -hmm. And so um, we started a, a station in Thief River Falls. I had a partner, and uh, that, was, uh, that went uh, uh, okay until I um, uh, had a divorce with the, with the partner. <laughs> Different philosophy on how you pay bills. Mm. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, uh, then we, we uh, got involved in a station in Grand Rapids, Minnesota, and that was a what was called uh, back then a, a Class A FM, about 6,000 watts. We made it into a 50,000 watt station, and uh, it's uh, you know it's a sales business, and the the people were interesting, and I I enjoyed it uh, very much. But well, we were having little problems in the late 80s, and uh, so we left our home in Rice, Minnesota, and moved to Grand Rapids. Um, and? Well, you know, uh, just an interesting <laughs> sidelight that I could share. When we started our station, our radio station in Grand Rapids, we would fly in. Mike is a pilot, mm -hmm. and we uh, would fly our plane into Grand Rapids, and the airport in Grand Rapids is very close to the downtown area. So we were able to actually walk um, to the radio station and do our business all day long and then fly back home. But um, when we made the choice to move from Rice, Minnesota up to Grand Rapids, it was a very good move. It's an excellent community, very vital, healthy community, and it's a wonderful place um, to live. Uh, both of our children were in college at that time, and so um, they were out of the home when we made that move to Grand Rapids. And, uh, but they found us. They both <laughs> arrived back in Grand Rapids and are working in our company mm -hmm. together. But the radio station um, was coming online and growing to a 100,000 watt station. 
at a time when computers were just starting to be mm. utilized to track all of the minutes of advertising that we were responsible for. So um, I really got involved in bringing the computer system online for our, our radio station. But we were still live. We did live broadcast. and. Uh, not like many of the stations today that are more remote. It really changed the industry. They have it? changed. It <clears throat> has changed dramatically. It took what, uh, on the bigger stations were good paying jobs and they became less so. Mm -hmm. I know we used to mm -hmm. have a radio program at the college where I worked mm -hmm. at and it got harder to get people into really good paying jobs unless mm -hmm. you went to a real big market. A large yeah. market, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, and then in, as, the, as the market changed, uh, we owned the FM station and another gentleman owned the AM station, and there was a need to combine those. Mm -hmm. So either you know, we had to buy him out or he'd buy us out. He bought us out in the early 90s, mm -hmm. and uh, that kind of entered our radio business, and uh, we went on to um, acquire a bigger uh, housing communities and uh, out of our office today we work with about 1300 residents in four different communities that we manage consequent then after that well in Duluth we have a big community called Zena Terrace and right across the street if you go into Duluth through Proctor there's an American there and that was the first hotel that we built was the American and Proctor and uh, 1996. Uh, 1996 that was. Mm -hmm. And um, from if, what we did is we, there were four of us and we kind of built a new hotel a year and uh, ended up with hotels in uh, Iowa, Michigan, a uh, couple in Wisconsin and Minnesota. Mm -hmm. So you folks have been in the business long enough now, you've seen these extreme swings of mm -hmm. oh, yes. things doing very well and things yes. not doing very well. You know, as recently as 2008, when we went into the Great Depression, I can, uh, it's it's survivors like you that I think are good mentors for younger people mm -hmm. who are going into business. Everybody has their missteps along the way. Sure. I don't think there's anyone who doesn't. Mm -hmm. And entrepreneurs are usually risk takers. Are are you folks in that category? Are you oh my pretty goodness. conservative? <laughs> 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 well, if you're going to be in business and you 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 have to uh, you have to be uh, into in risk. I mean, there's definitely risk in whatever you do. Calculated risk, mm -hmm. but you have to know the opportunity and what um, it, you know. Yeah. You are actually risking in going into that opportunity. Yeah. But he enjoys the challenge. Oh, I think you both do. Well, <laughs> we do, but I, I think we complement one another rather than yeah. compete. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm I'm kind of his mop-up person. Yeah, I always I always <laughs> said I like to make deals and Mary mops them up. So she's the detail person. I'm the yes. detail person, right? Yes. And and um, we we do um, work together well. And and not all mm -hmm. entrepreneurial couples do that, but we've been able to do that for many years and. Well, just to give a little background to our viewers, uh, when I first met you folks, that was mm -hmm. in the spring now of 2016, uh, because you're doing a project in Staples called Correct. Timber Lake Hotel, mm -hmm. Correct. and you also purchased a restaurant right next door to that, that you're going to be remodeling and tying that together. And so shortly after this show airs, you will be having a grand opening, I'm assuming sometime in the spring of 2017. Yes. That's correct. And the thing that really I mean, interested me about you folks. Uh, I've done a fair amount of work in economic development with different businesses and companies, but you brought a different attitude to the community uh, than any that I've really ever been involved with. And the attitude was that we're coming to your community to become a member of your community. And, when, and that's hard to say and hard to do when you're so diversified as you are. But I know we had an awards banquet not long ago. I wasn't able to be there. I was doing some political deba debates back then. But I know you came to the to that event in Staples. Yes. Um, and that is not only impressed me, it's impressed a lot of people in the community mm -hmm. that you've made a commitment to doing good things in the community. And, and that's not as common as one might imagine. That's mm -hmm. pretty unique. And you have a, your whole family, as you mentioned, your mm -hmm. two children. Uh, grown-up children are involved in the business mm -hmm. now. They are. 
and your son's name is, is it Ben? Burl. Burl. Burl Ice. But, you, but his real name is <laughs> Michael. Mike. Michael. Oh, yeah. Michael Jr. Mm -hmm. And right. everybody calls him Burl Ice, yes, well, which right. is kind of cute, too. Thanks yeah. to the football coach. When oh, he really? Was in yes. college, yes. Wow. So anyway, so you've got, you've gone from that radio business and then you got into housing. Are these rental facilities and you have your housing? It's a land le lease community and the homes are manufactured and brought into the community. But there's been a lot of changes in that industry as well. And we're still totally mm. um, operating um, communities throughout the area. Um, it's a wonderful form of housing. The um, housing product has certainly improved over the years. Uh, we started in that business in 65, mm -hmm. um, and we've seen great improvements. And there's also some wonderful improvements in the housing communities, which is our end of the business, um, including uh, the ability to build garages for the residents, have the residents own not only their home, but a garage on their land lease property. So do they own the actual building and they, they mm -hmm. lease the spot then? That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. They lease the mm -hmm. land, but they own their home. And that home ownership is a real important um, aspect of manufactured housing communities because that gives them some pride of ownership. And so they feel very committed to keeping their properties in good condition. And then um, the sales piece, and Mike spoke <coughs> about that when we were uh, starting in the business, we learned that in order to keep your communities fresh and clean and up to date, um, you needed the opportunity to uh, replace a home, a home that um, you know was um, smaller and, and less well maintained. It can be uh, removed from the land lease property and a new one can be brought in. So the synergy of the sales and the leasing of the community property go together very nicely. And our daughter works in that end of the business. Mm -hmm. um, she's a broker. Uh, we're all real estate agents, but she's a broker and, and works very specifically with manufactured housing. Um, we've been in that business for so many years. And, and matter <laughs> of fact, every member of our family has chaired um, the state association lobbying and uh, really? legislative mm -hmm. work. Sure. Mm -hmm. So are these homes, do they have basements or are they just they on They do grade? not have no, basements. They're on grade. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do you okay. develop the homes too then and sell them or are you just... Well, we uh, buy them from factories. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you buy the homes and then you make them available for somebody That's who wants correct. to purchase right. them. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. and we do kind of a turnkey. Uh, we make mm -hmm. sure that the home is properly set and aligned and that it's uh, well landscaped and sidewalks in the right places and uh, makes a big difference in the look of a community. Tell us a little bit about your hotels because mm -hmm. I know you have a number of hotels. Mm -hmm. You're pretty diversified. I mean, I, I think that's one of the things I found that was really fascinating. What, what's mm -hmm. the story of the of your hotels? Well, the hotels, like Michael mentioned, um, came into our life in about 1996. The nice thing about um, our hotels are that we are very careful about our location and the standards of the management of the property. Um, it's very important to us that the people that work for us in that property are from that local community. We don't bring in a a team of um, you know managers who are um, like a management company would. We uh, recruit and train people in the local community, help build the uh, local community's vitality. We encourage our employees to be involved in the community. Um, we give them time off to do nonprofit work. We um, run projects and collaborate with nonprofits in the community. Um, and we feel very strongly that our job is to help these employees become the best um, expert they can in the hospitality industry. And uh, the question is asked every single day, is this good for the customer? Are we doing this for the customer? And, and that, we think, is the way to go about that business. Um, we have um, also learned that you have to have a certain size hotel to have room, um, a distance from oh, us, enough, you know, if it's volume. not owned yeah. and operated by the same person, you have to um, have a certain size hotel to make that financially feasible. So you have interest, or you, do you own two in Brainerd, the Baxter area? Mm -hmm. we, we, we have some uh, partners, I have some partners, we've been partners for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. Wow. And uh, 
Uh, together we have uh, 12, we just bought another hotel. We have 13 hotels as partners and our family has uh, three and we're building the fourth, fourth one, one in Staples. That's wow. strictly our family. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, is it Super 8 and Comfort Inn and Suites in, in Baxter that you're associated no, with? No, uh, it's the uh, Super 8 and the uh, Country. Country Inn and Suites. Country Inn and Suites, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. And we just did a major remodeling down there. So yeah. it's, um, it's a good opportunity for people to see some of the changes being recommended by mm -hmm. that particular franchise. Um, and they are going to um, a different look. You know, when you say the word country, you have in your mind kind of um, um, country um, atmosphere, yeah. but um, they have gone much more metro, um, kind of simple, yeah. um, straight line, um, and different color schemes. They're keeping up with the trends in the marketplace, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so we just completed that remodeling about yeah. a year ago, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have a very successful family business, mm -hmm. and family businesses are often targets for takeovers by larger businesses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is that something you have had to deal with in the past, or have you well, been able to stay keep your independence? You know, I guess we're not ready to uh, to quit working yet, and <laughs> um, uh, so no, we haven't had to deal with that. I mean, we well, let me rephrase that. Uh, in the in the community business, we get a call a week for people wanting yeah. to buy the communities from around the really? country. It's just mm -hmm. amazing, yeah. Wow. And we get calls even on our hotels, but we're not we're not ready to um, uh, to sell and and uh, quit working. So. Well, and, and it's also kind of a mindset, Mike, well, don't you think? Because uh, some entrepreneurs actually set their business up with the prospect that this is something, as soon as I get it up and running, it's available for sale. Um, our philosophy, um, personally, is that we like to hold, maintain, and, and do a good job of maintaining that property into the future, but we like operating our properties, mm -hmm. so it's not a build and flip or sell. Mm -hmm. um, it's we maintain and, and operate. So what is it that you look for when you go to a community? What, what are some of the keys? You know, uh, what I, in fact, I got involved in Staples because your economic development director in Todd County, Rick Utick, who used to be in Grand Rapids, he was at an event and he said, Mike, he said, you, they're looking for somebody to build a hotel in Staples. You ought to come up and check that out. Well, we did. Uh, but what I, what I look for in a community, is it growing? Mm -hmm. You know, what's the employment base? Uh, where, where are people working? Uh, what's the overall economy? Where, am I, where are our customers going to come from? Mm -hmm. I think you've got, to, you've got to be able to answer those questions. The second thing is, uh, is, is government friendly. And I will tell you that in Staples, uh, they, wanted, uh, they wanted to be helpful and work with us. That's not always the case. Really? You get over over in other communities that we've, and I'll just name one, Duluth, <laughs> over the years. It's been uh, challenging. It's been, it's mm -hmm. been very challenging, and uh, they've changed now, but I will tell you 10 years ago it wasn't that way. Which and, is really odd when you mm -hmm. think that every community would want to invite Cust uh, you know, new entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. businesses, especially the hospitality industry, sure. into your community. It would be, mm -hmm. it's hard to imagine somebody making it tough to do that. Mm -hmm. But I can believe We you. could do a whole show on that. I'll bet, <laughs> I'll bet we could. So is it often, is it is it regulation that you're mm -hmm. usually dealing with? Building regulation? Zoning. 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 Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, very often it's zoning issues mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, you had a lot of anti-neighbor uh, groups that, uh, you know, didn't want any kind of change. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that sort of thing that you have to deal with, and uh, which kind of drains you out after a while. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know? You, Understandable. You start to ask why. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I know that you folks have a, a strong interest in the trades mm -hmm. and attracting young students, because without students doing the bricklaying and the, the construction, we aren't going to have... Mm -hmm. Our mm -hmm. communities. Well, that's true. And w what is it you do when, when you're well, trying to attract students to what you well, do? Well, you know, we have, Mary and I both have a strong interest in education in general, the mm -hmm. trades being one of those. I, I feel in our, our country uh, forgot about the trades for many years, and, and, and people weren't out of high school, everybody had to go to college. Well, not everybody 
does. If you've got good, a good uh, uh, work ethic and like to work with your hands, there's great ways to make a living in the trades. Mm -hmm. And I find that uh, uh, there's a lot of shortages in the trades. That's one of the issues now with rising construction costs. For sure. when, uh, when we had that five-year downturn, a lot of people left the trades and didn't come back, and you didn't have young people coming up through to take those replacements. So consequently, there's a shortage in the trades in, in many areas, and it's, uh, it's caused uh, rising uh, prices, and especially in commercial construction. But I think we need more opportunities for the trades. So what is it you're doing at, at Staples? You're, you're going to have some of the classes come through and look at what we you're were doing, just, aren't you? uh, Yes, we were just talking about that <clears throat> this morning. We like to bring uh, the classes, if, if they're willing, if the instructors are willing, uh, into our project uh, several different times so they can get a feel for what we're doing now and then as we get closer and then towards the end and they, they can uh, vision themselves. Uh, working on a project like that. And, and we do have great support and have mm -hmm. had it in various numbers of our projects uh, from our architect and our construction people. Um, mm -hmm. Matter of fact, um, our architect was going to be meeting with Mary Clem um, from the school district to arrange times for various classes to come, mm -hmm. engineering classes um, and some of the trade classes. Um, but even as we get further on, we will make contacts to bring them in for business classes too, because not mm -hmm. only the trades, but also uh, the business side of our um, hospitality uh, gives us opportunity to talk to students about career opportunities and, and ways to contribute, so. Well, tell us a little bit about what the project is at Staples. Oh, sure. Um, the Staples <coughs> Hotel um, is going to be um, kind of an upscale property, and um, we want to have some of the amenities that will um, actually support and complement the community. So that was one of the reasons that we visited a lot of the businesses in the area, and the hospital, and um, NJPA, I believe yep. it is. I always yeah. mix, mix up the letters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but we know that there's ways that we can work together and have some real synergy for the lodging side of our business. Um, and we also saw a great need for the um, restaurant and the event center. Now, we operate those in two other communities, so we understand how you know, they can work mm -hmm. together very well. And um, so this project will give us um, about 52 rooms. Um, we are especially designed some of them t for long term. Um, the hospital was explaining to us that they have doctors coming in from other areas and they also have uh, families that need places for longer than one night stays and so we have like six um, uh, like mini apartments i guess you would call them with a separate mm -hmm. bedroom and oh, a really? living room, sort of like dining room lodging. kitchen yeah. exactly mm -hmm. so and and we would probably made less of those had the community not recognized that as a need so we're trying to listen to the community and build what they think they might enjoy. Um, we also have um, heard that you could use a s another swimming pool and a place to have uh, pool parties, and so mm -hmm. we'll be accommodating that. Um, so it, it'll be an interesting property. It's being very well designed. The architect uh, from uh, WSN? Yeah, Mike England. Mm -hmm. um, is Smith. Yeah, very, mm -hmm. very good company. We've worked with them before, and um, they uh, looked at that site, which was a beautiful piece of property, um, and it had some elevation changes that allowed us to design a building that's going to be aesthetically very nice on that property. Um, it's going to require some landscape because we lost some trees, and, and that's very important to us to, to get that landscaping in place. Um, we also um, pay a lot of attention to energy efficiency, and uh, Mike is very good mechanically, so he's always making sure that we take that into consideration. Um, but we're, we're looking for um, a nice place for a person to celebrate um, re reunions, weddings, um, uh, family events, graduations. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to be able to accommodate um, both in the hotel itself and also in the annex building with the restaurant and event center 
uh, many of the needs of the community. And then I think it's important that you fit together with the community. Mm -hmm. um, and it is different in different places. And it's going to be called Timberlake? It is Timberlake. Timberlake Hotel will be our second Timberlake. And the other one's in Grand Rapids? In Grand Rapids, yes. And this uh -huh. will have, I know I looked at your plans, in kind of a lobby with a theme of the area? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we, we did, um, when you look at a location, um, you, you need to learn about that location, not just the um, visibility from the highway, which is always something that people do as they start a business, but we also wanted to know about the community itself, why it um, grew, you know, what um, was part of its history, and of course you're, you have some logging history and you have a wonderful railroad history, mm -hmm. so we'll be bringing both of those <coughs> amenities into our um, decoration and decor, so. We're down to our last minute here, oh, but do you, wow. um, do you belong to any organizations? If, what if there are younger people or just people interested in learning more about what you people do, people mm -hmm. on the entrepreneur side? Do you, do you have a state organization that does that, does that sort of thing? Well, well, uh, you know, you get the Minnesota Lodging Association okay. if you want to learn more about mm -hmm. that. There's uh, trade publications that are actually Many. free. Mm -hmm. uh, hotel motel management is one of them, and mm -hmm. and there's some others that uh, students or schools can get on that list and get free publications. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have a website? We oh, yes. do. Yes, we do, and it's um, TimberlakeLodgeHotel.com. And I would guess that if anybody's interested in working for you folks, then they could go to that website. They can. And get Appli your Absolutely. information about and what might be available. Our application is online. They're, they're willing to take that and send it to us. We'll be in contact with them uh, very quickly. We'll be starting um, interviews for that this spring. And, and what, what's the next project in line? <laughs> Are you too early to say? <laughs> Uh, I was going to say, Ray, that we're always looking for uh, uh, good, high-energy employees. Right, well, yeah. and, and good communities. And so. good communities. Right. Well, I think you will find them, and I think they'll yeah. find it's fun to work for you folks. <laughs> so thank so. you very much for being on yeah. the show, well, and good luck with your new endeavor, and we hope yeah. that it's very successful. Well, Wonderful. thank you for having us. Yes. You bet. Yeah. You've been watching Lakeland Currents, where we're talking about what you're talking about. I'm Ray Gildow. So long until next time.